This program is brought to you by OnSite Technologies. Welcome to Women of Mariposa. I'm your host, Marlena Hebern, and my guest today is the Mariposa County Unified School District Teacher of the Year. And this is her plaque for Teacher of the Year, and I'm going to read it to you. Her peers have described her as being innovative, creative, a futurist. She leads our campus, has incredible ideas, and shares willingly teaches her collaboration team about things she's learned from conferences. This is Marianne Emery. Marianne, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me here. It's quite a pleasure. <clears throat> I appreciate you asking me to come here. Well, thank you. Can you um, tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I've been in teaching for 21 years. I was born and raised in Santa Barbara County. Um, the youngest of six children. I have my bachelor's degree from Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. I have a master's degree in K-12 technology integration. I have a wonderful husband of six years, and my son is 20, and he's in the Army. And I love to travel. Uh, I was lucky enough to visit 13 states this summer, including Alaska. Um, and I love to do home improvement projects. Wow. <laughs> you keep pretty busy. I do. <laughs> I enjoy staying busy. So there's a lot of changes that have happened in classrooms in the last couple of years. What do you think is one that has been the most impactful for you and your students? Well, certainly the implementation of Common Core uh, because it changes the way we are teaching the children. Uh, it's much more in depth, uh, knowing why something is happening and understanding, a deeper understanding of all the concepts. So we have to approach it differently as teachers and also encourage a lot more collaborative work with students um, and uh, coming together in order to solve problems. So that summarizes if I, I just want to repeat back, what I heard you say is, is just deeper into problems, solving problems, deeper understanding of content. Yes. Is that what you're seeing yes. in Common Core? And being able to work with others uh, to help solve problem solve. And it's not just mm -hmm. a solo effort. Right. So it's just like in, in the uh, work field of today, working together with others mm -hmm. on the job to accomplish a task. Mm -hmm. Where people come together, you just don't usually sit in your office and exactly in isolation and try to solve the mm -hmm. business problem learning right. to work with people right. of all different uh, levels so you use technology in the classroom how are some ways that you're using technology well I'm really fortunate in all my students have an iPad so in order to utilize that uh, throughout the day uh, they are completing assignments through uh, websites uh, they can take tests, which helps with my grading, uh, and we use it as a, a response system. I can ask questions, the students can respond directly from their iPad. Uh, the answers all come to me, so I'm able to check for understanding from all the students, not just one or two that are called upon to answer mm -hmm. something. So mm -hmm. they all have to be ready to answer um, on their toes, thinking, and submit some sort of answer to me every time <laughs> every there's time. a question, whether it's correct or not they have to submit something, then I know where I need to lead them in the lesson. Mm -hmm. And what grade What grade do you teach? Oh, fifth grade. Fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So they're ready to Absolutely. use the iPad. They've been using technology for many years, probably mm -hmm. from out of the womb. They've mm -hmm. started looking at an iPhone or uh, an iPad or a computer, and their brains are really uh, formed uh, to see digital images. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are ready to go, and, and they often teach me. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard that, that that kids' brains today are actually um, developing a little bit differently because of their use of technology, that they don't process things quite the same way that we did growing up without technology. Exactly. That's what the research has shown, and we need to acknowledge that as educators and change the way we teach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, what are some challenges that you've come across as a, that you face as a teacher? Well, I think one of the biggest challenges is the amount of grading and assessment because you need to continually assess uh, to know where the students are, to know what direction to take your teaching. Um, and the paper grading can get very overwhelming and that's a challenge. So finding alternatives to that um, like the programs where my students, they do their spelling assignments online and they take their tests online, so it grades it for me. Uh, finding um, other ways, other methods of grading mm -hmm. is helpful. And using the technology to help you with, to process that. Yes, yes. Right. And That's so nice. then it just leaves me with some of the more technical grading, the writing uh, that a computer can't 
Mm -hmm. Great. Right. Where do you get your ideas for lessons? Well, there's there are so many uh, teacher communities online to draw from uh, and bounce ideas off of. Um, but a lot of times it's just everyday life experiences. Like one time I was in one of those yogurt shops where you fill your yogurt up, everything that you want, and then they weigh it and they mm -hmm. tell you how much to pay. And I saw that as an excellent opportunity for students uh, to give them parameters. This is how much you get to spend. Figure out how much yogurt, how many toppings mm. that you can put on uh, the yogurt and only spend this amount and working collaboratively. Um, so that brought in a lot of math skills that they needed to learn anyways. That's a great math problem. <laughs> That's a great math problem. And did you actually have ice cream or they're just... No, they're but... Just they're just working through the yes, imaginary Yes, and they were told how much the ice cream, uh, you know, that they would weigh that in ounces, but how much each of the different toppings, you know, a gummy bear versus right. uh, a chunk of brownie or something. Right. So, so I had to give standardized measurements for each, and then they would have to say, well, how many of each they would put, three right. brownies, uh, and even the sprinkles, they had to put it on by ounces, how many ounces of sprinkles they wanted. So they're really weighing mm -hmm. volume versus price versus exactly. how much brownie do I get? That's yes. great. That's a great and the students had activity. different prices that they could spend. So um, they had to work together with their group for the value that they were given. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. Now I hear that you use a lot of social media in the classroom. I hear that you <laughs> use Facebook. Tell me how, what do. you do use and I how do. you use that. I do use Facebook and I love it. It has been a really wonderful tool uh, to communicate because so many adults are on Facebook. Um, it's something where it pops up when they're looking at their personal Facebook. It pops up in front of them. It's not, I have to go check my email to see mm -hmm. if Mrs. Emery sent something out. Um, it's there and they see it. Um, I use it to communicate um, assignments the students are working on to show what's going on in the classroom, pictures of the students involved in activities, highlighting students uh, for special recognitions, birthdays, any types of awards, announcements that I need to get out there to parents. Mm -hmm. um, so many different uses and then the parents can message me. I also have where students uh, are able to 24-7, really, they can message me. Mm -hmm. And so students will message, message me in the evening, needing help on a math problem, and I can sit there and you know message them back and help mm -hmm. them solve and the math problem that they uh, were working on, um, taking pictures uh, of something they need help with, and it just works out really well. So I'm really happy with it. This summer, I was able to create um, a page on Facebook for the students that I'm ha having in a couple weeks, mm -hmm. my new students. And that way I kept in touch with them through the summer and they were able to, uh, they worked on math assignments and spelling and reading. And wow. then they also tracked me and as I traveled oh, this summer. Oh, where were And they had to try to figure out where I was based on picture clues, message okay. clues that I leave for them. Um, then, you know, so it was the where in the world is this Mrs. Emery game that we played. And so that was really fun. That but it really just kept fun. them involved learning mm -hmm. uh, so when they start school uh, they don't have that backslide of knowledge right. their brains right. have been learning throughout the summer and wow. in a fun way that's really exciting they've enjoyed it and, and I think that's a great way to to get kids to practice being on social media because their parents are there watching them yeah in the kind of a closed environment it is through the parents uh, Facebook page because mm -hmm. children aren't allowed to have a Facebook page mm -hmm. so that's another way the parent can monitor it also mm -hmm. what's going on and it is a closed group so they have to request to join and if you're not in the group mm -hmm. you can't see what's going it on it, and it keeps it very private yes, for yeah. safety reasons right right that's yeah. great I really like that that's a good do you do you have any role models I would have to say my mother mm -hmm. she uh, raised six kids she was a PE teacher at a Catholic school and she's 80 years old. We just celebrated her 80th birthday this summer with the trip to Alaska and um, she still has a full schedule, uh, mostly volunteering, but she stays very busy and when I want to go visit her, I have to call and make sure she has room on her schedule for me. <laughs> <laughs> she would clear her schedule, but uh, I tease her about that all the time. She just stays active and just wonderful, caring person. Wow. Yeah. That's great. That's <laughs> great to have that relationship with your, with your mom. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, have you read any good books? Any books that have influenced you lately, or are there any books that have influenced you, or authors? Well, I would say first and foremost the Bible. And that's that's pretty much my life guide. Uh, but as far as other, say, let's say any nonfiction, mostly the books that I read with my students, mm -hmm. I really enjoy. <laughs> and, and one of my favorites uh, for that is uh, a book called Walk Two Moons. Oh. And it's a very emotional journey for a young girl. And, uh, and, and it's one always one of the favorites of the students also. Walk Two, I don't think I know that, that book. Well, you're Walk going to have moons. to read it because it's, it's very enjoyable. I have to look it up. Yes. <laughs> Do you have any favorite quotes? Mm, I have this one quote on the wall in the classroom that, it, well, it says, in this classroom, we don't do easy, we make easy happen through hard work. Mm. So I really want the students to understand you get where you are in life by working hard. Nothing's easy, and you have to work hard to get what you want. Mm. So I really instill that in them every day, mm. working hard. If you were going to do anything different leading up to your career to this point, what would it be? I don't think I'd do anything different because I think even mistakes I've made have made me a better teacher um, mm -hmm. over time. You know, you learn from those mistakes um, and everything, you know, happened for a reason and I'm here today. I'm very happy with my career choice and very honored to be the teacher of the year. That's a great answer. <laughs> That's a really good answer. Um, how can people contact you if people uh, want to get in touch with you? Is there a way they can contact you? Well, certainly through the school. Uh, and then there's the Facebook page for, I actually manage the Facebook page for the school site. Mm -hmm. So you can always go on there and send the school the message. Uh, and there's the school webpage, which they can get to through the Mariposa uh, County Unified School District page. There's a link on there for Mariposa Elementary. I would say those would be the best ways. Great. Anything social media, it's pretty quick and easy uh, because you receive notifications of those right away right. when someone you know, right. sends you a message on those sites. So right. I always have my phone with me and it lets me know if somebody's posted a message. <laughs> and I just wanted to say a thank you to the Mason's Lodge who also um, puts on a wonderful dinner to honor our Mariposa County uh, Unified School District Teacher of the Year and the Classified Employee of the Year. They do a great job. Yes. It was really great to see the um, how they honor teachers. They have a long history of doing that. Yes. And do you have any, um, well, let me think how, <laughs> now I'm going to fudge on that one. <laughs> um, um, do you have any plans coming, for anything special that you're doing this year with your class? Hmm, well, I, I just plan to do more and more of the technology and being that lone dancer out there that uh, other people uh, will hopefully join in on and start, uh, start a movement uh, in the classrooms of uh, the implementation of Common Core and, and technology integration and getting more teachers involved in doing that. Well, thank you, Marianne, for coming in today. Thank you. And this is the uh, women of Mariposa. Thank you for joining us.